For the past week or so, we've been talking about plate boundaries and what geological features occur at those plate boundaries. And now we're gonna create a model of the processes that are occurring. Models are a great way to demonstrate something that is either too big just to, to be seen all at one time, too small, like an atom, something that's too small to see with your naked eye, or a process that happens too quickly or very, very slowly. So plate tectonics occurs on this large scale and some of those processes are slow, like the actual plates moving, but then some of it can occur quite quickly, like an earthquake or a volcanic eruption. So we're gonna create models to do that. The great thing about models is you can use anything at your house. So anybody is able to create a model. Good models will demonstrate motion or movement in a process. They will represent all the pieces in a process and also a, the model can be explained by the scientist who created the model. In this case, that's you. I think that we could create models with anything that we find around. So let me just look for a second. Huh. I bet I could create an oceanic continental subduction boundary using this folder and my lesson plan book. So I can see that these are great models because the oceanic crust is really thin, like this folder, and the continental crust is much thicker, like this planner. And I can cause the oceanic crust, because remember that's more dense when these converge, the oceanic crust will slide underneath the continental crust, and I can make it a step better by talking about the features that occur. So right here is a deep sea trench as the plate subducts underneath. And I'm showing subduction because it's going underneath. Um, definitely earthquakes will occur there, but something else is gonna happen too. Volcanoes are gonna form on the continental crust. And I'm gonna use M&Ms to model my volcanoes. So I know that as the crust subducts, and I'm gonna turn this around so it's easier to see. As the crust subducts, it's gonna cause partial melting right here of the continental crust, and that magma will rise until a volcanic mountain chain is formed on the continental crust. This is like what's happening in the Andes Mountains when the Nazca plate subducts under the South American plate. Ooh, I got an idea. Let's challenge the other science teachers um, and see if they can come up with models uh, with stuff in their classroom. So I'm gonna pop into their rooms and see if they've got some ideas and can show us how they just use whatever materials they find in their classrooms to create plate boundary models. Let's see what ideas Mr. McKinney has for modeling a transform boundary. Let's pop in on him. Hey, we are creating models in earth science and I was just wondering, uh, with things you got in your classroom, could you show us a transform boundary? Transform boundary. Yes. Cool, we got calculators right here. Okay, so transform boundary, kind of like the San Andreas fault line. Uh, that's where you're going to have two plates that are sliding past each other, like so. Ooh. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. What, what's going to occur there? Uh, an earthquake, generally. Yeah. All right. Thanks for showing us how you can or you can model with anything. Anytime. I wonder what Mrs. Rice has in her room that she could model a convergent collision boundary. Let's see. Let's get her catch her off guard here. Hey, Mrs. Rice. Hey, Mrs. Rice. So we are making models in earth science and wondering, could you find something in your classroom to model a convergent collision boundary? A convergent collision boundary, that's where two continental plates collide and make mountains, right? Like the Himalayans or something? That's the one. Look at these magazines right here. Two stacks of magazines, two continental plates. Look at that! Wow, you can just really model with anything you've got laying around. Let's pop into Mr. Wallace's room and see if he has any ideas for a divergent model. What could he find in his classroom? Hey, Mr. Wallace. 
And we're making models in earth science and just wondering if you could help us out for a minute. Sure. Um, could you show our students how you could use anything in your classroom to model a divergent boundary? Okay, that's, um, yeah, let's go over here. I think what we'll do is, um, to, the, to kind of demonstrate it, we use some paper and the paper will be my two plates. And in the middle, of course, we have a boundary. And I've got some sand. Yeah, here it is. It's white sand, so it's white sand, white paper. We'll see how this works. And then, since they're diversion, it means they come apart. So I'm pulling apart here. And it worked pretty well. Now, since they're open now, the magma from beneath is able to come up from the bottom and then make the ridges. And so I'm just gonna kind of do this by hand here. And those ridges become more pronounced. And with divergent boundaries, you do get earthquakes sometimes. So uh, this would be a good example of like the mid-Atlantic Ridge. So. Okay, let's see Miss Daniel. She is going to give us a super fancy model of what? Subduction. Oceanic, oceanic. Okay, let's see. Ooh, she's got quite a setup. You know what? I bet you could even do this like at home. Like people have paper and yeah. foil and oil. Yeah, you really only need since we're gonna have one plate subducting under the other, you really only need the two pieces of paper to show that one's sliding under the other. But I wanted to also show how the volcanoes form from one sliding under the other, so I'm gonna add a little bit of magma. Oh, let's see it. Underneath. This works. So have you done this before? Nope. Okay, so even at your at home, you could just like try things out and see how it goes. Yeah. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. Just okay, see so how it I'm goes. Try sliding this under. Stuck a little. You know that's pretty normal. Maybe they're the plates. You know, build up all that. Oh yeah. Stress. Yes, like friction, and then yeah. that's when it moves eventually. Then you get some earthquakes that form. Yeah. All right, so one slid underneath the other. We're gonna give it a minute and see. <gasps> Look. What's happening? The oil then got pushed, and you can see then a line of where it is coming up through the paper, which would represent a line of volcanoes in this point, in this model. Oh, and this is really cool because you can see that different than a hot spot, you've got multiple active volcanoes that could occur at the same time. And they're not all over the place, they're in a line. Yeah, right where that oceanic plate subducts. Mm -hmm. Wait, okay, so let me ask you this about your model. Mm -hmm. How did we know, how did you know which plate was gonna subduct underneath? Because they're both oceanic. Well, typically the oceanic plate that is older will subduct under the newer one because um, as the crust is older, it gets colder and older, colder, and it becomes more dense and it will go under the younger one. So this plate must be a younger oceanic plate and this is an older. Huh, interesting. Where would this, like, do you have a idea of where this would happen? Um, yes. This happens where the North American plate comes in contact with the Caribbean plate. Um, the North American plate is older, so it goes underneath the Caribbean plate, and that's what forms some of those islands in the Caribbean. Awesome. So, okay, so we don't really need the foil. I just put the foil there so that it like had a so you wouldn't have all the oil like this. This is wait. This is can you oil. show if you wanted to do this at home? Where where do you have all the foil? Just in that the, the spot oh. where I originally put the okay put the oil. So okay, kind of fancy. Thank you. Now it's your turn to make a model, and we're gonna up and be antsy a little bit. This is a competition. And so you're gonna use models from, or use materials from your house to create the best model that you can for your assigned plate boundary. Check the document on this page to see what your assigned boundary is and make sure that your boundary includes, or your model includes the type of boundary, the types of crust involved, so oceanic or continental crust, the geological features that are gonna occur at that boundary, 
you got to make sure it's got to be a video because you've got to make sure that your model shows motion. So this is a Flipgrid video and we need to see what's happening and hear your voice. You can use text to enhance it, but your model cannot just all be text on a screen. You've got to video it and you've got to explain it with your voice. Um, it needs to include an example of where this occurs in the real world as well. And once you upload it on Flipgrid, you're gonna go back and give feedback on your peers' models and let them know what you really liked about it, what maybe they could have done differently. Like if you are like, oh, that's really cool, but I would have done it like this, add that. Okay, so these comments need to be meaningful. You can't, like, here's what we don't wanna see. Cool, dude. That was great. Awesome. No, it's got to be meaningful. Like, oh man, I really liked how you used those M&Ms to show the volcanic mountain range in your oceanic continental subduction boundary type. That would be a really good feedback. Okay, so you're going to give your feedback and we're going to see like which ones have the most like votes, the most comments that are like super positive and like, oh, woo woo. There will be a winner for every type of plate boundary. And what will you receive? You will receive the most spectacular science stickers that you can imagine, and they will be sent directly to your house and you can keep them forever. Yeah, that's what you'll get. So get your model going, get thinking about what materials you could use to make a model at your house You've got, that's your assignment today, is to make your model. So make it really, really good. We cannot wait to see what you guys come up with.